and welcome back to my channel. Today we are talking all things Byron Bay. I have just got back from a four day trip to Byron Bay and I'm gonna give you all the tips and tricks, all the info you need if you are heading on a trip there. Here is my travel guide to Byron Bay. <music> start to anyone who hasn't seen my videos before my name is Kat I've been traveling the world for the last two years I spent about eight months living in New Zealand recently and I'm now in Sydney for six months so make sure you're subscribed if you're looking for more Australia content or travel tips and tricks Okay, the first thing I'm gonna talk about is how long to go to Byron for. I personally, from my experience, think the minimum amount of time you should spend in Byron is three days. Now, obviously, you can go for one, you can go to, for two, that will be fine. But to really get the most out of Byron, I think you wanna stay there around three to five days if you really want to chill out then you can definitely stay a week you could definitely stay longer if you want to but three to five days i think is a really good amount of time to make sure you see everything relax as well get to do a couple of activities and just really soak in the byron life next up we're talking where to stay so i can only talk about one place personally that i've stayed because i've only been once and i've only stayed in one hotel it was called the lord byron hotel and i do actually highly recommend it it wasn't cheap but it was definitely in comparison to other places in byron on the more affordable end of the spectrum while still being high rated in general accommodation in byron bay is not cheap because it's just such a popular place to be even the hostels we were comparing the lord byron hotel to some private rooms in hostels and to be honest it just didn't make sense to pay for those for a private room in a hostel when we could get something very similarly priced in a hotel with a lovely pool and drink service at the pool and a hot tub and oh the lord byron was great they clean your room every day we had no issues very easy check-in lovely check-out time of 12 o'clock the whole stay was pretty seamless is that the word spotless whatever it was great two of the hostels that we were strongly considering when we were looking at places to stay were the yha hostel in byron bay and the wake up these are two really well-known hostel chains as well, so they're quite reputable. Um, again, not cheap, especially not for a hostel, but if we'd have opted for one of those two, I think it would have ended up being the YHA, just because the location was much more central. The Wake Up Hostel was a bit further out of the town, so you'd have to really cycle in to get into Byron every day. Having said that, there are lots of budget options. Your best bet, I think, is searching on booking.com. Find the place that you think is gonna suit your budget and your needs the best. Then make sure you always check the prices. Booking.com can be sneaky sometimes and it can actually be more expensive to book through booking.com than with the actual place itself. So find where you wanna stay on booking.com, then go to their own website and check the pricing, compare the pricing and then go with the cheaper option, obviously. Oh, and another point to make here, if you are going to Byron on your own as a solo traveler, it's a no-brainer to stay in a hostel dorm room. It's the best way to make friends and you're obviously going to be saving a lot of money because if you're solo and you're not sharing a room with someone, then staying in a hotel or something is going to be double the price for you anyway. Okay, next up is how to get around. The best way to get around Byron in the center of Byron is definitely walking. You can pretty much walk everywhere in the main town. All the shops, all the restaurants, the beach, they're all within a really nice distance of each other, so it's really easy. The second best thing to do to get around is to hire a bike. A lot of the hostels and hotels will offer bike hire, so you can cycle around, you can go a little bit further afield. The last thing to mention there is there really isn't a lot of public transport, so that is not a way to rely on to get around. Really the best way is to walk around the place, walk around the center, bike if you wanna go a bit further afield, book taxis or shuttle buses in advance if you are like needing to go to an airport, whatever it is that you're venturing a little bit further for, you may need to think about booking transport. The best 
best thing to do is to ask your accommodation when you get there if they have recommendations. Next up, we're gonna talk about when to go. Now, I went to Byron Bay early February, so I just got back and it's the 14th of February. And January, February, and March tend to be the wettest months in Byron. That doesn't mean it's constantly raining all the time. They get a lot of lovely weather as well, but it is in dur during these months that you risk the most rain. Unfortunately for me, this was exactly my experience. We were there for four days, three of which it was torrential rain. And if I'm honest, it did slightly spoil the trip. So there is potential to avoid January, February and March in Byron, but I wouldn't say if that's the only time available to you to go to cancel it out completely. We still really enjoyed our time. It just was dampened, quite literally. <laughs> Speaking to some of the locals there, they really recommended visiting during their winter months, which is about June to August kind of time. It tends to be pretty dry and reliable sunshine over their winter months. It's around 2022, like early 20s for temperature wise. But the added bonus to going at that time of the year is that it is whale season. Whale season runs from around May, June to October, November. So during those months, you'll have a high chance of spotting whale Wales. There are a lot of whale spotting trips. I think that would be a really special thing to add to your Byron Bay experience if you haven't seen that before. Having said all of that, I really don't think there would be a particularly bad time to visit Byron Bay. Considering in the winter it's still in the early 20s, the rest of the year is obviously going to be warmer than that. So you can't go too wrong. I just pray for you that you don't get the rainy time that we did. So potentially the best time to avoid could be January to March. I wish I knew that before I went. All right, moving on to where to eat. This, as we all know, is the most important bit of information. So make sure you're listening up. Okay, we are gonna start with breakfast. For breakfast, there are two places I can personally recommend. One is called Combi and one is called the Bayleaf Cafe. Both really delicious, really interesting breakfasts special shout out to the, I think it was like a sweet potato flatbread breakfast with cauliflower and stuff at the Bayleaf Cafe. That was 10 out of 10. I also have had recommendations from other people to go to the Byron Bay General Store for breakfast and also the Sunday Bakery. Both of those places, I've also had a lot of recommendations from other people, I just didn't get the chance to try them. Next up, we're going for lunch spots. I don't know about you, but when I'm on holiday, I tend to go for a more casual lunch, a more grab and go lunch, a kind of in between activities or just grab a lunch that you can eat on the beach, something along those lines. So there is a big Woolworths supermarket. Just go grab kind of picnic style bits. They also obviously do sandwiches, sushi. You can grab whatever you want there. And then the three places specifically that I would recommend would be Grilled, which you may have heard of because it is a bit of a chain, um, but it's a kind of healthy burger chain. Uh, where they obviously grill the food rather than fry it. So Grilled is a really good burger chain and I really highly recommend the sweet potato fries. They were out of this world, I had them twice even though I wasn't even going to eat there, I just, I just needed to have them again. Secondly is a burger place called Bella Porto. Bella Porto? Yeah. Bella Porto, which um, was recommended by a local. We actually didn't get around to trying it, but there are always people there sat eating your burgers. It's very much like your classic, slightly dirty burger and chips kind of a place. The third place I'm gonna recommend is a place called Pasta Puglia. Puglia. Pasta Puglia? Is that how you say it? Probably not. This place does four pasta dishes and only four pasta dishes. I think it's penne pomodoro, they do a pesto pasta, a meat ragu, and aglio olio. We tried the aglio olio and the pomodoro, both very, very delicious. Lastly, in the food category, we're moving on to dinners, the best meal of the day, in my opinion. We're starting with Chihuahua Taqueria, which is an amazing Mexican restaurant that does really delicious tacos. The best tacos I've had in quite a while. I can't tell you exactly how much it was, but I do remember looking at the bill and thinking, oh, 
that's really much better than I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> Next up for the shout out is a steak place called Ember. Now they don't only do steak, they do like some pasta and various other dishes as well. But we did have a steak there, it was delicious. I wouldn't give it a 10 out of 10. I wouldn't give it a 10 out of 10. It, I felt like there was potential for more there, but nevertheless, we had a really lovely evening. And I have to tell you, the cauliflower, there's like a crispy, I think it's Szechuan cauliflower starter. Oh my God. Oh my God. I would eat that every day for the rest of my life. It was sublime. It was so good. I never knew cauliflower could taste so good. It was like kind of meaty, like so good. The third dinner shout out is going to a restaurant called Light Years. This is an Asian fusion place. It's a really cool decor inside. This food there was delicious. The serving was amazing. It's definitely on the pricier end. Like, don't get me wrong, it's not a cheap place to eat. But if you're looking for a last night meal or like an extra special experience meal whilst you're there, I really thought it was worth the money really delicious the miso aubergine i think was my favorite dish but also the bao buns we had some bao buns which were really good there too finally on the where to eat list i'm going to throw this one out there the beach hotel the beach hotel it's such a vibe this was a great recommendation from our friends george and hat thank you very much the vibes are great the music is good it's just at a very nice level throughout the day we actually didn't make it down there for an evening but i have heard a night at the beach hotel is also a very fun place to be the food was really delicious i had this like salmon sushi dish which was super delicious i also had garlic bread 10 out of 10 they do pizzas and if the garlic bread was anything to go off because it was like pizza style like cooked in the pizza oven garlic bread i'm gonna say the pizzas are gonna be really good i just was i was pretty blown away it's quite a big place as well like you won't find it hard to find a table there highly recommend beach hotel good vibe and it is right on the beach as the name suggests so it's a really great place if you're spending a beach day to like pop back there for lunch or just go for a drink moving on now to the second most important thing after food is what to do if you're not just going to eat and drink all the time what can you actually do in byron bay well let me tell you there's a lot you can do the top recommendation from everyone which i was desperate to do when i was there is the dolphin kayaking i will link the two best highest rated companies that you can do it with below the next thing i recommend is snorkeling at julian rocks i have heard amazing things about this people have been snorkeling in the wit sundays and said so julian rocks is even better so I would definitely give that a book if you've got the funds and you've got the time. Again, I will link the companies below that offer that kind of trip. Next up, I've already mentioned this, is a surfing lesson. If you're not scared of the sea like me and you're going to Byron Bay, you've got to get a surf lesson in. It's like the thing to do and I think it would be so much fun, especially if you're going with a group of friends, you can all do one together or even if you're going solo, it's such a good way to make friends, booking activities and going along and getting to know a group of people who you've never met before. Next up is the Lighthouse Walk. Everybody talks about this and it is something you should do at either sunrise, if you can make it up that early in the morning or if not then sunset obviously goes without saying like it needs to be done on a clear day because it's a sunrise sunset thing you can do it in the middle of the day it just might be a little bit hot it's about a one and a half hour return trip i think next if you're not up for going all the way up to the lighthouse or you don't have time for whatever reason there is another little walk you can do that we did on our last day in byron head down to the main beach turn right when you get to the beach walk the whole way to the end of the beach and then when you get to the end, you'll see there's this little lookout tower on like a rock that you can climb up. Now it is important that you do this in low tide to ensure you can actually get there because if you go in high tide, you'd have to swim to get to the lookout, to get to the steps. 
So yeah, check the tide times, but that's a really lovely shorter walk. Next up is shopping. The shopping in Byron Bay is second to none. It is fantastic. There are loads of sort of more surfer chilled hippie vibe shops. There's also a lot more mainstream shopping. There are some gorgeous like dress shops, more like high end shops. There's a lot of browsing to be done. That's for sure. Even if you haven't got the money to spend, which I didn't. And there are also a few bargains to have as well. You can definitely find some little mini trinket shops and things here there and everywhere and then for a more budget option of shopping you've got the Byron Bay community market well there's tons of markets actually there's loads of different markets but apparently the best one is the community market and it's on the first Sunday of every month so if you can time that in with you when you go that sounds like it would be a really good thing to do and lastly to mention is bars. Now I have two main recommendations and the first one is recommended by basically everyone who's been to Byron. Everybody says you need to go to the piano bar, which is in the Nor North, North Hotel, the North Coat Arms, the the northern the northern it's inside the northern pub which is a fantastic place to spend your night and if you've already done the piano bar maybe you've done the beach hotel as well and you're looking for somewhere else to go the second recommendation is rails also known as the railway friendly bar i think that's what it's called it's an odd name it doesn't really roll off the tongue but very place to but but it's a very good place to spend an evening okay there you go there you have it that is basically everything you could possibly need to know about byron bay before you visit if you have any other recommendations for byron bay please pop them in the comments below so you can share them with everybody else who views this video thank you so much for coming to watch i will be back next week do not forget to click the thumbs up if you found this video helpful thank you goodbye